Hi. So, uh, today we were doing group presentations. Um, the students had to prepare for it the, the last couple of weeks. And I just wanted to talk about it because, you know, a lot of things are fresh in my mind and it's easy to talk about it then. So, um, I wrote it down on the board some topics I want to talk about. Uh, the first one, the setup. So, I'm, I'm teaching beginner English speaking for Korean students. And I've got a class of 18 to 20 students. One of their assessments is a group role play. I don't like to use the word presentation because then they feel like oh, I'm just talking to the class, but I want them to feel like they're acting and they're actually doing a movie, talking to a friend, you know, it's, it's real life, not just them talking to an audience. Okay, the setup. First of all, um, I tell the students about the topic. Um, they're supposed to have a conversation with other friends for at least six to eight minutes. There are three students in a group, sometimes four, sometimes two, it depends on the situation. The aim of the role play is for students to practice some of the language they've learned in the units that we've covered. So we do this towards the end of the semester. First, you have to put the students into groups. Some professors like to put the students in the groups. Some professors let the students choose their own groups. Me, I let luck decide. And I tell the students that. I mean, in life, you don't get to choose who you hang out with. You, you have to talk to a variety of people. So, yeah, you, you, can, you spend more time with your friends, but when you go into the outside world, you don't get to choose who you interact with. Uh, so you should actually practice um, speaking to anyone. So we pick randomly. And I feel this works because students don't, don't feel that, you know, oh, the teacher gave me someone bad or I don't have any friends. They are stuck with someone. Um, and that means they have to work together. So I put uh, numbers into a hat, students pick, and they join up with a group. The topics. The main aim for me is for students to go into these conversations and just talk about something that they are interested in and also use some of the grammar that they've, they've learned throughout the semester. But it's more important for me to, to take the students from the start of the semester where they were. Many of them not confident, not used to using uh, English, not used to speaking it. To the end of the semester where they do the group role play and they feel, wow, you know what, I'm actually using a lot of these things in a situation that could happen in real life. So I've done it in a variety of ways. Um, I've, I've given students strict instructions. I've told them to stick to the topic or given them units. Um, a popular way if I did have students that are very low level, very low level students and it's difficult for them to come up with topics or ideas, uh, an easy way for them to do it is you say, okay, you've got three students, A, B, and C. Uh, I want A to write a conversation, a short conversation between A and B, and it should be about food. So actually A is writing it, but he should a write the conversation between the two of them. And then B should write a conversation between them. That could be perhaps hobbies. And then C could write between them and that could be like, what are you doing this weekend? That's a simple way. And also they don't feel that only one student is doing all the writing and all the planning and the other two just pitch up. So if you have low level students and you're worried about them, that's one method to do it. But I found in general, like the class I've just had, uh, during the, the initial two weeks when I told them about it and then I give them some time in the second week to discuss it, I've give, given them freedom to choose their own topics. They can use the book, they can use the internet, but I want, to make, I want them to make it personal to them about something that they care deeply about or something they want to practice in real life. I was worried when I saw them talking and planning, but towards the end of the second week, I could see that they're starting to build something and they're starting to understand what to do. And I've got to say 95% of the time I've been pleasantly surprised at what content these students have come up with, the conversations and the ideas. You would have students coming in here doing a role play about getting a bad motel room and asking for the manager to change it. You get normal conversations, especially with lower level students where they 
they just go over the basics and you're, you're happy because they feel comfortable doing these things that if you saw them doing it two months ago, they were quite nervous, even though they know it, they haven't practiced it, to coming in front of the class and just um, doing the role play and they seem more confident. And that's what I want to see. I want to see the improvement that students have gone through these last um, couple of months. And that is what this role play is useful for group. The topic uh, preparation, I give students uh, two weeks about to, to write and to practice their group role plays. Um, they take each other's numbers and they communicate to make sure everybody's ready and set for, for doing the, the role play. And then uh, once they come in this final week, I just check their scripts, ask them if they're ready, ask them a few questions, and then let them do it. Once they come to the front, they can set up. Normally, if they're doing a conversation, they can put a couple of chairs and sit down. Uh, it's easier for shy students just to, shit, to sit down and talk about it. Um, the, but if they want to do a proper acting and role play, they can move desks and things around in front. Before they start, they have to introduce themselves. They have to speak loudly and clearly. And they should always face the audience. One of the worst things they can do is either stand to their side and show, or show their back. And this is also a great time to tell them about body language, about keeping their shoulders up and backwards, standing up tall, uh, taking up space. I think that's very important. Shy students, when they come to the front and they make themselves small, they are actually getting more nervous, so they should open up to talk to the audience. Make sure that when they speak to their friend, they actually make eye contact. At the end of the presentation, they um, have to wait for feedback. I give them some feedback, some mistakes they've made or something I'm impressed about. I'm, I made another video about giving good feedback. You can check that out. Um, I think that's very useful. I just wanted to talk a bit about group role plays um, because I just made a video about it before. You can check it out here. And I want to leave you with this final thought. Whatever you're going to do in class, you should always consider how useful is it to the student. What benefit does the student take from this material or this exercise? How can they um, use it in their real life? Yeah, so uh, everyone, that's me. Uh, you can find some other videos. Uh, I just wanted to riff about um, this class I just had.